In the labor of the engines and trades and the labor of the fields, I find the eternal meanings. Today, more than ever, the true meaning of America is to be found in the labor of its people. Without constant improvement in the trades and crafts and the sciences, our way of life would cease to exist. And if the labor of men is to be fruitful, their efforts must be supported by a strong, flexible banking system. The United States has such a banking system. It includes approximately 15,000 independent banks and the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. Each Federal Reserve Bank serves the commercial banks of its district and through them, agriculture, industry, and commerce. The Reserve Banks are closely linked together as a central banking organization under the supervision of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. The fourth Federal Reserve District, which includes Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Kentucky, and the Panhandle of West Virginia is served by the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Its offices are at Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Pittsburgh. The fourth district is one of the busiest and most vital areas of the United States. More than 15 million people live here. They account for over 10% of the nation's business. The day begins at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland when one of the four time clocks, which were set the previous night, releases part of the lock mechanism. Vault men have separate and secret combinations, each of which is a factor in unlocking the great door. Every morning of every business day, this procedure is followed to open the vault. This well-balanced wheel withdraws the last of the locking devices, leaving the door free to be opened. The door assembly, including the crane hinge and frame, weighs 300 tons, which makes it the largest vault door assembly in the world. The door itself weighs 100 tons, but it is so delicately balanced that two men can swing it easily. Behind this door are approximately $6 billion worth of securities, currency, and other valuables which belong to the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, the member banks in the district, and the United States government. Each day, millions of dollars worth of these valuables must be taken in and out of the vault. To permit quick and easy access, a system of bridges is part of the vault assembly. When they are lowered into position, they provide not only a footbridge, but a push truck pathway as well. Why a push truck? Well, large amounts of currency must be moved in and out of the vault. A million one dollar bills is an ordinary load, and it weighs more than a ton. The cable is for electrical power connections to the vault. The securities that will be needed for the day's work are the first to cross the bridge. Throughout the day and night, guards are on duty wherever valuables are present. Here the captain is conducting a routine inspection before assigning stations. Meanwhile, one of the mail trucks has arrived bringing with it the day's mail along with thousands of checks from the member banks in this and other districts as well as from other Federal Reserve Banks throughout the United States. In the mail room, the sacks are opened and the individual pieces routed to the correct department within the bank. In an ordinary day, visitors from all sections of the district call at the bank for a first-hand view of the bank's operations. These visitors include bankers, businessmen, college and high school students, and other interested groups. For those who wish to go through the bank, a member of the staff who is familiar with the various departments will conduct the tour and answer the many questions that arise. Most visitors are interested particularly in the cash department and in check collections.
and are usually surprised to learn these are only two of many functions the bank performs. Let's join these business executives who are about to make a tour through the bank. The first stop is the cash department, which is a reservoir and source of currency and coin for conducting everyday business. This shipment is from a local bank. All incoming circulating coin is first weighed on sensitive scales. The printed weight is stapled to the bag. The contents are checked for unfit, mutilated, or counterfeit coins and dollar amount. When the coins have been checked, verified, and found fit for further circulation, they go to the counting and wrapping machines. The machines count the coins, drop them into the paper wrapper, and crimp the ends, all for the convenience of the druggist, the grocer, or other local merchants. When they come from the wrapping machines, the filled coin tubes are placed in cardboard boxes and sent on to be prepared for shipment. $500 worth of silver coins will weigh 27 and one half pounds. Pennies weigh in at 17 pounds for $25 worth. Here, where money is a matter of tonnage, the conveyor is a great help. A double check on the number of coins in each carton is obtained by weighing. The weight is printed on a card, which is placed inside. Steel straps secure the carton and seal it. The boxes of wrapped coins are stacked on flats and handled in much the same way as industrial materials. The coins are stored in the vault, awaiting orders from member banks. A supervisor checks the cartons preparatory to filling an order. A shipment of new currency from the U.S. Treasury arrives at the Reserve Bank. Currency from a bank in the 4th District is received by our tellers. They put an identifying mark on each package of bills so that we know from which bank it was sent. When paying tellers get an order for currency, it is counted and double-checked. This unique machine counts every bill fed into it. These girls are very skillful in detecting counterfeit bills. When found, they are turned over to the U.S. Secret Service. If two bills stick together in the sorting process, the mechanism automatically stops. The assorting tellers tie the thousand-unit bundles, which are then stored in the vault until needed. When a bank sends in a requisition for money, it goes to the paying tellers. Orders are filled from the storage vault. In the vault, two employees remove the currency from the compartment. Wherever currency or securities are handled, you will notice that the presence of two men is necessary in order to open any vault compartment. This dual control system provides double security and accuracy. When currency becomes unfit for use, it is destroyed. Bills are placed in packages of 100. This machine then punches seven holes in the bills. Unfit Federal Reserve notes and Federal Reserve bank notes are cut in two lengthwise. The halves are shipped on different days to the Treasury Department for final count and destruction. All unfit silver certificates and U.S. notes at the main office are destroyed in an incinerator there under supervision of the Fiscal Agency Department. The Federal Reserve Banks act as fiscal agents for the United States. Under strict supervision, unfit silver certificates and U.S. notes are verified as to dollar value. The bills are counted rapidly and accurately by experienced verifying clerks. Just as you've always heard, we have money to burn but only money that is dirty, torn, or otherwise unfit for further use. About 60,000 bills are destroyed at one burning. The flame is gas-fed, and temperatures reach 2,600 degrees of heat. An ordinary day's incineration leaves only a shoebox full of fine ash. Our fiscal agency department receives lists of names of employees of business firms who have purchased savings bonds under the payroll deduction plan. Presently, there are about 400,000 plates in these files. This young lady is pulling the plates of an employer's list from the files. 
The plates are put through a machine which prints the purchaser's name and other pertinent data on the face of the savings bond. 